Hello, you can hear me? Uh, I'm Janica Lodner, and uh, I want to welcome you to this Cyber Learning Summit. I'm excited by the number of people here, and I want to say hello to the people who are out there participating virtually. I, um, I, we don't know how many there are, but I've been told there are many, many organizations and people participating virtually. Um, I'm the National Science Foundation program officer who recommended funding for this event. So what I want to do is tell you a little bit about the history of the event and what I hope will be accomplished today. Um, over the past year and a half, many of you know, we've put a new NSF program in place. It's called Cyber Learning Transforming Education. Um, and we've awarded about $15 million in project funding, um, some small piece of that for this particular um, workshop. Um, this is actually, it sounds like a lot, but it's actually a pretty small amount. Um, it's in addition to hundreds of millions of dollars that NSF has awarded over the past three decades to research and development of technologies for learning. And it's uh, this $15 million is only a small part of the total of over 40 million, I don't know how much it is, over 40 million in cyber learning awards made by NSF in the last year from across all the different um, programs. Um, some of you have heard of Play-Doh and Sketchpad and NetLogo, Intelligent Tutor, Scratch, Alice. Okay, those were all funded by NSF programs. So um, Cyber Learning Transforming Education, it's this new program, and it's an interdisciplinary program that focuses directly on advancing the science of cyber learning. So cyber learning is funded all over NSF, but this particular program is focused on the um, advancing the science of cyber learning. And let me tell you a little bit about what we mean by that. When we talk about the science of cyber learning, when we talk about cyber learning, we think about three parts. One of them we're going to do a lot of today, together. Imagining, designing, and developing prototypes of the next generation of technologies for promoting learning. We're going to do a lot of imagining today. We're not going to be doing designing and developing. So the first of the three parts of what cyber learning is, is imagining, designing, and developing prototypes of that next generation of learning technologies. Um, the second part of the science of cyber learning is learning how to use those technologies effectively to promote learning. And that's whether we have learners working directly, interacting directly with those technologies, or whether those technologies are mediating their interaction with others, or whether those technologies are providing feedback to other people like their teachers, their mentors, their parents, facilitators, whoever it is, who can help them learn better. Okay, so learning how to use the technologies effectively to promote learning is the second part of cy what cyber learning is. And the third part is advancing the science of learning in a technology rich environment. Okay, so um, the next generation of learning technologies we assume is not simply going to be online learning. We've got that now. Okay, um, not simply blended learning. We've got that now. Not simply individuals interacting with a machine not simply big data collection analyses for purposes of assessment, but rather we imagine that that next generation of learning technologies includes all of those things and much more. Okay, because computing technologies offer opportunities for having learning experiences that are new and different from any of those opportunities that have been possible in the past. The uh, NSF Cyber Learning Program has two missions. One of them is advancing the science of learning in a technology-rich environment and imagining what those technologies will look like. And the other is developing a way of helping different programs that also fund cyber learning activities to interact and take advantage of each other's missions. Okay, and this summit was designed by uh, the folks who designed it um, to help achieve both of those goals. Um, now, there was a particular catalyst along the way that helped us get to where we are today, and I want to say something about it. There was a report in 2008 uh, that came out, um, I don't know who put it out. It was headed up by Dan Atkins. Um, it was based on an earlier meeting convened by Bill Sandoval, and it made several recommendations I want to share with you. First of all, they advised that we focus that next generation of learning technologies on connectivity provided by the internet. Now, you know, that was 2008 when they suggested that, 
And the weird thing is now that four years later, okay, um, rather than that being a big focus of anything we're doing, it's kind of taken as a given. So uh, the world has moved forward and the internet is really important, but not necessarily front and center the way that they talked about it in that report, which is just a kind of, to me, a really neat uh, aha moment thing. Um, second, they advised that the new program should have a particular focus on opportunities for learning as assessment that would not be possible without technology. Okay, so there's some things technology can do. You know, you can have a boring lecture and now you can broadcast it and bore millions of people at the same time, okay, instead of just a few hundred. Okay, but they said, look at the things that technology can do, okay, that wouldn't be possible without it. And we're gonna see lots of examples about that today, of that today. The third piece of advice I like in that report tells us to not simply focus on technology itself as a driver of learning, but it rather it reminds us that people and technology working together are going to promote learning that we always have to think about the human computer experience. Think about it as human-centered computing, okay? And we shouldn't forget about all the people in a learning environment. Um, another thing was, the fourth thing that I like about that report, they warned us that technology is changing fast, okay? And that we therefore need to figure out a faster cycle for getting new learning technologies and applications developed and evaluated and out there. And we also need to develop the ability to look at what's coming next and forecast the potential impacts of those technologies for promoting learning. So we've got to be able to do that. And finally, and perhaps most important, that report advised that the time is right to bring together what we know about how people learn with the opportunities afforded by technology. They advised an interdisciplinary approach, um, which is what we have here, okay, and what we have in the cyber learning program. We need people who know technology's affordances to work together with those who understand how people learn and others who understand the environments in which learning happens and others and others and others, okay? And they advise that we should use what we know to focus research and development on what matters most in promoting learning. Promoting depth of learning and the stickiness of what is learned and learning how to draw learners in and keep them engaged, especially those who we don't know how to engage right now. Okay, a corollary, corollary to this advice is that we should in parallel be developing that science of learning in a technology rich environment that I mentioned earlier. Now all of this requires participation of, collaboration between experts from a variety of different communities, learning scientists, we have some of those here, raise your hands. Um, artificial intelligence researchers, we have some of them. Uh, big data people, we have some of them. Um, technology futurists, um, technology experts. Um, some people are raising their hands a lot of times, and I would be also if I were out there. Um, game designers, hooray. Um, experienced designers, who considers themselves experienced designers? Okay, and those who will use and benefit from the technologies, teachers, students, families, museum goers, concert goers, who, who do we have out there? That should be everybody, right? Okay, I'm sure I left some out. So we have people who are expert in all of these areas here. We have presenters who are expert across several of these areas. And I want all of us here and in the virtual world to participate in imagining the future of cyber learning. Our goal today is to imagine that future and imagine how to get there. Um, I'm really excited about what we will learn about that future from each other and with each other. And more importantly, what we will be able to imagine at the end of today that we can't yet imagine this morning. I wanna thank Jeremy, Sherry, Patty, Judy, Danny, the rest of the team for organizing this event, which I'm sure will be amazing.